Welcome to the UK Data Service. This video is designed to show researchers who wish to use control level data how to log into the Secure Lab environment once they've been granted access. Some data are deemed too confidential or sensitive to be downloaded, so we created a secure virtual research environment, our Secure Lab. This makes it possible for researchers to access and analyze data in a safe setting. To log into your account, Click the login icon on the top right hand side of the page. Then select click here to log into Secure Lab. You will now see a pop up reminding you that if you are to proceed, that you agree to abide by all clauses of the Secure Access User Agreement and that you are accessing from the approved location declared in your application. You'll now be asked to enter your Secure Lab username and password. We are phasing in MFA, multi factor authentication, for extra security, so you will also be asked for a password token. If you don't have a password token, please click Don't Have a Token. In order to generate a token, you will need an authenticator app on your smartphone. There are a number of providers of free MFA apps that you can use with Secure Lab. These include Microsoft Authenticator and Google Authenticator. Please note that the UK Data Service does not have any official affiliation with these apps and encourages you to choose an MFA solution that works best for your device. Please enter your username and click Next. It can sometimes take a minute or two, but you will be emailed a verification code. Remember that your email must be institutional, not Hotmail, Gmail, etc. You'll then see a page with a QR code. Please open your previously downloaded Authenticator app on your phone and scan the QR code. This will register your device. You should only need to register your device the first time, so you'll be able to skip this step for subsequent Secure Lab sessions. Click Finish and Sign In. On this page, please enter your username, password and password token. Your password token is the six-digit code you will see on your phone's Authenticator app. This code changes every 30 seconds. You should now be on a page with a Secure Lab icon. It's important that you only click on the desktop icon once. Double clicking may launch two desktops, which may function for a while, but they will eventually conflict and freeze your working session. When you log into the Secure Lab, the first message you see is from the Citrix Smart Auditor software. Each time you log in, your session is recorded. We do this for security purposes and also to help researchers if they experience any difficulty using the Secure Lab. Please note the message which reminds users that the Secure Lab is unavailable every Tuesday between 10am and 12 noon. This is due to regular maintenance downtime. Click OK to agree to this condition. Next, click on File Explorer. You'll now see two drives. First, we'll take a look at your personal drive, the M drive. In here, you'll find a folder for the project that you've been approved to undertake. Let's open it up. This is your project area and you'll find a number of subdirectories. Each project area can be accessed by other users who are approved to work on the project in order to enable collaborative working. However, it is private to a project team. Other researchers using the Secure Lab will not be able to access this area. The original data folder contains the data sets that you have successfully applied to access. This is a read-only folder to prevent you from overwriting the clean data by mistake. You can make copies of the data files and paste them into the working folder. This is a writable directory where you'll undertake your analysis. You can store any syntax files you produce in the syntax folder and this will help you to organise your work. You may wish to upload your own data small area demographic data for example. For instructions on how to do this, please refer to your Secure Lab User Guide. The Secure Lab User Guide is given to all researchers that attend our training course and is also available inside Secure Lab itself for easy reference whilst you're working. If you have made a request for us to upload your own data or syntax, we'll save them in the Uploads folder. During the life of your project, you'll want us to release some statistical results to you. Please save these in the SDC folder. Please refer to your user guide for details. Next, we'll go back to this PC to show you the references drive. 
This is a common reference library accessible to all researchers who log into the Secure Lab. Here you'll find a number of useful resources which will help you with your analysis. For Stata users, there is an ADO library in the folder marked ADO files. You can program Stata to retrieve Stata ADO files from here. Most are in alphabetical subfolders. If an ADO extension you require is missing, just let us know. For R users, there is a folder containing a great number of R packages. If what you need is not in this folder, then please get in touch. You'll also find a number of lookup tables. These include classifications such as industrial and occupational, price deflators, postcode directories, and user guides where you'll find a copy of the latest Secure Lab user guide, the SDC handbook published by the Safe Data Access Professionals Group, plus guidance on Zentu, linking business data, and more. Finally, let's look at the software available in Secure Lab. Close File Explorer to return to the desktop. Here you'll find statistical packages such as Stata, Python, QGIS, various versions of R, SPSS, Jupyter, MLWin, Spider and more. In addition, we have Microsoft Office software to enable you to write up your statistical analysis. Finally, I'll show you how to sign out of the Secure Lab properly. Please note that just clicking disconnect at the top of the screen does not log you out of Secure Lab. If you click this, you'll remain signed in and may experience problems when trying to log in again. Please go to the Start menu in the bottom left corner. Then click on Disconnect. The content of this presentation is included in the user guide provided on the training course you attended with us. This means that once trained, you have this information at your fingertips should you need to refresh your memory on any aspect. If you trained with another service, don't worry, you can also find the user guide in the references drive we looked at earlier, under user guides. There are a number of useful guidance documents in this folder. We've written the user guide based on the experiences of our users. The contents are clearly defined so that you don't have to read around the topic and can get the information you need straight away, whether that be how to make an output request, how to import documents or any other aspect of secure lab use. There's a lot of really useful information in the guide, so we do recommend that you make use of it. It will save you time and make SecureLab run more smoothly and efficiently. For any queries not covered by the user guide, please contact us through one of our contact forms on the UKDS website or one of the other methods shown here. We hope you found this demonstration of SecureLab useful. We're always seeking ways of improving it, so please get in touch if you have any suggestions.